Okay, so let's talk about how to solve with rational coefficients. Now remember, that's a vocabulary moment. Rational coefficients. A rational, rational numbers that's referring to a fraction or technically a decimal that can be turned into a fraction. So anytime you're in a coefficient, remember, is the number in front of a variable. So for example, if you have 2x, the coefficient is the 2. If you have 2 thirds x, the coefficient is the 2 thirds. And if you had 0.2x, the coefficient is the 0 0.2. So remember, the coefficient is always the number in front of the letter, in front of the variable. And when you have a coefficient in front of it, touching it, when they're touching like that, that when they're touching just like that, that means multiply. So anytime you solve an equation with a rational coefficient, you're always going to divide both sides. So let's remember that. Anytime you need to move a rational coefficient, oh, I'm sorry, not just rational, any coefficient, not just rational, any time, any, oh, any u, that doesn't make any sense. Let's see, let's try that again. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's see. Any time you move any coefficient, you always do it with division. Because all coefficients mean multiply. That's how you move it. You move it with division, meaning that's your step that you do to both sides. So a simple example, if you had 2x equals 10, you would get rid of times 2 by dividing by 2. So you can do division sign 2, you can do fraction bar 2, both of those mean divided by 2. So let's see, those cancel, so you're left with just x equals 5. So that would be the solution to that equation. So now, remember to get rid of any coefficient. I don't care if it's a fraction or a decimal. So let's look at an example where it's a fraction. So let's see. If we have, two, let's say, 2 fifths x equals 6. Let's say that's our problem. If we have 2 fifths x equals 6, I see a coefficient. That coefficient's a fraction. Big deal. I want you to remember you move all coefficients by dividing. You just have to remember how. So let's see. Divide by 2 fifths. Divide by 2 fifths, okay? So now, just like over here, on this example, the coefficients are gonna cancel when you divide. So cancel, cancel. So on the left side, we have just x. Now, on the right side, we gotta figure out how to divide by 2 fifths. And we mentioned this in another video, so just in case you haven't watched them, you're seeing it for the first time, no problem. We've got six divided by 2 fifths. Some of you remember this as keep change flip, so you remember this as you just remember how to divide by any number. When you divide by a number, especially a fraction, when you divide by a fraction or a number, you always multiply by its reciprocal. That's one way to do it. So let's see, six, we need six to have a denominator. Since it doesn't have one, we're gonna make it a one. You do that with all whole numbers. That division becomes, a, becomes multiplied. This is why we multiply by the reciprocal. Or in keep change flip, this is the change part. Now it's time for the flip part, or the reciprocal part. Two over five becomes five over two. So we now have x equals 6 over 1 times 5 over 2. Many of you know shortcuts with multiplying fractions, but just for now, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to use the shortcut. So let's see. That gives us x equals 30 over 2, because 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 2 is 2. And now 30 over 2, that simplifies to 15 over 1. And 15 over 1 is just known as 15. So that's the answer to that equation. That is the solution to that equation, solving with rational coefficients. So to recap, remember, no matter what the coefficient is, you always divide to get rid of it. Even if it's a fraction or even a decimal, you always divide to solve and move a coefficient to the other side. Because remember, we move it to the other side because when you're solving the equation, you're trying to get the letter by itself. So your goal is to get the letter by itself, which means move away from it. So the last thing you should move away from the letter is any coefficients that it happens to have. Okay, so let's see. Another example. Let's say this one will have a negative in it. So let's say we have negative 4 over 7, and that negative does not matter if the negative is out, up top or if the negative is in front. If one of those things is negative, the entire thing is a negative value. So we have negative 4 over 7. We'll use m 
equals, let's say, 2 over 3. Okay? So negative 4 sevenths m equals 2 over 3. That means negative 4 sevenths times m equals 2 over 3. So just like before, you get rid of all coefficients. By get rid of, I mean move to the other side of the equation. You get rid of all coefficients. You move them. You undo them. The inverse operation of having a coefficient, because remember, coefficients mean to multiply, is always going to be divide. So divide both sides by what you're moving, by negative 4 over 7. So divide by negative 4 over 7. So just like over there, these cancel. So we're left with just m. We have just an m. Now, on the right side, we've got 2 thirds divided by negative 4 over 7. Remember, keep change flip, or I prefer to just think of it as understanding how to divide. When you divide with any number, especially with a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So let's see, that is that 2 over 3 stays 2 over 3 because that one, ne the first number never changes. But it's that division becomes a multiply. Negative 4 over 7, you got to flip it. The reciprocal is negative, I'm going to put it in parentheses because it's negative, 7 over 4. So that's what we're multiplying. So again, I'm not going to use a shortcut because I don't want to confuse you with more steps than what's necessary, but you're welcome to use a shortcut on the 2 and the 4, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So let's see, multiply straight across. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 4 is 12. And that negative sign, a positive number times a negative number is always going to give you a negative answer. So that's negative 14 over 2. So now your job is just to convert that to, that's an improper fraction. You're going to convert it, simplify it all the way to a simplified mixed number. So I will, so I will go ahead and I'll simplify it first. So what you do is you see, okay, what goes into 14 and 12? I know that 2 goes into both of those. So that becomes negative 7 over 6. So now you're really converting negative 7 over 6. So let's see. That leaves us with m equals 6 goes into 7 one time with the remainder of 1. It has the same denominator of a 6. It was negative before, and it's still going to be negative now. So your final answer is m equals negative 1 and 1 sixth. And that's going to be your final answer to that equation. So even if it, one of them was negative, just keep track of your negative and simplify your final answer back into a mixed number. Okay, so one more example, and we'll do this one with decimal. All right, this next equation will have a decimal in it. So once you realize, even if the coefficient is a decimal, you're still going to divide. So let's see. Let's, let's if we had 0 point, let's say 3, x equals, and we'll make it, uh, I don't know, 18. So 0 0.3x equals 18. That means 0 0.3 times x equals 18. And so to solve this equation, we have to get rid of 0 0.3. We get rid of 0 0.3 by doing the inverse operation of multiply, which is divide. So let's see. We divide both sides by 0 0.3. Divide both sides by 0 0.3. Okay, so those cancel. So on the left side, we have just an x. And now on the right side, you have 18 divided by 0 0.3. That just means you got to figure out what is 18 divided by 0 0.3. Not the end of the world. We're going to do long division. Okay, so let's see. We've got 18 divided by 0 0.3. So now, when, remember, when you divide by a decimal, you've got to move that decimal place over so until it's a whole number. So out here, you move that decimal once to make it a whole number. So that means in here, you move this one also once. So you move that over once. So in that gap, you get a zero. So that decimal inside of here goes straight up. And so your decimal and your answer will be right there. So what you're really calculating is 180 divided by 3. That's what you're really calculating right now. So let's see. Let's do long division. 3 goes into 1 0 times, so I'm going to skip that. 3 goes into 18 6 times. 6 times 2 is 18 even. Subtract out, you get a 0. Bring down that other 0, get another 0. 3 goes into 0 0 times. 0 times 3 is 0. Subtract 0. I know it seems silly doing all the zeros, but I'm proving you have a remainder of 0. So look at your answer, though. You have 60.0, I guess you want to put a 0 there. So you have 60. So that means 18 divided by 0 0.3 it's going to be 60. So x equals 60. And so your final answer is the solution to that equation is x equals 60. If you weren't sure, you could always plug it in and do 0 0.3 instead of an x. Put a 60 there. Do 0 0.3 times 60. And you'll get 18 as your answer. So you'll have 18 equals 18. 
which is a true statement, which is always true. That reminds me to always remind you, always check your answer when you have any doubt. Even when you don't have doubt, sometimes you're overconfident. On a, on a test or a quiz, you've got the time left over. Use it to check your answers by plugging them back in and seeing if it is a true statement, always. That is especially important when with more complex equations that you can't necessarily do a one step in your head. All right, so solving rational coefficients, one more time, just remember, with any coefficient, you always move it to the other side by dividing. So what if it's a whole number? So what if it's a fraction in this example? So what if it's a fraction in this example? You still divide both sides by that coefficient. And so what if it's a decimal in this example? You still divide both sides by that coefficient. You then just have to realize, rely on, excuse me, rely on your skills of how to divide by a fraction, how to divide by a fraction, how to divide by a number, how to divide by a decimal. So that means those details, those foundational skills are something you wanna make sure you are more than willing and able to do. So this should help you with, with all equations when you, when you have a step in them, when you gotta get rid of a coefficient. Because you're gonna be doing multi-step equations and two-step equations and equations with variables on both sides to where you're at some point, you're gonna have to get rid of a coefficient. Sometimes it'll be a fraction, sometimes it'll be a decimal. So if somewhere inside of your problem, usually the very last step, when you go to get x by itself for that final step or whatever your variable is, you're gonna divide both sides by the coefficient. So remember that, you always get rid of coefficients by dividing. Good luck, guys.